The January 15, 1966 coup was a failed rescue effort that resulted in incalculable consequences for everyone. But was it a patriotic endeavor that went wrong at the end? Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Hispul Media. If you are new here, consider subscribing, like this video to go a long way to help me grow this channel. Thank you. Between 1960 and 1966, there was a complete breakdown of law and order in some parts of Nigeria. This alarmed all patriots and nationalists who were dismayed by our failure to govern our affairs immediately after gaining independence from the British. The coup of January 15, 1966 had all the hallmark of a patriotic call to arms by the young majors. Public pundits were motivated by their dissatisfaction with the political class's sheer incompetence. However, a closer examination of the motives of some of the coup's ringleaders revealed that they were anything but patriotism. The coup was solely a Nigerian operation carried out by patriotic citizens. Ndibo or the Igbo State Union had no involvement in the coup at the time. Insider accounts revealed that it was in mid-November 1962 that they held the one and only formal meeting that preceded the coup. The meeting which held in Lagos in the military quarters of Major Ifia Juna was very short. A consensus that something had to be done quickly to save Nigeria from anarchy and disintegration and to restore peace and unity to the nation was reached. It was agreed that only the use of force should bring immediate end to the violence being perpetrated in many parts of the country. It was therefore agreed that the use of force should be minimal. Political leaders and their collaborators were to be arrested, but whenever an arrest was resisted, it was to be met with brute force. Otherwise, the initial intention was not to kill anyone. Only the heads of government, that is the prime minister, the four regional premiers and their right-hand men were considered most essential to arrest throughout the country. In addition, among their military collaborators, only the top echelon and those holding strategic positions were earmarked to be arrested. They included the commander-in-chief of the Nigerian army, General Agui Ronsi, the commanders of the two brigades, Brigadiers Ademulegu and Mai Malari, the chief of staff army headquarters, Colonel Kor Mohammed, and the adjutant general of the army, Lieutenant Colonel Pam. Others were the deputy commander of the NDA, Colonel Shodeinde, the quartermaster general of the army, Lieutenant Colonel Onegbe. The commander of the 4th Battalion, which was based in Ibadan and was the most politicized unit of the army, Lieutenant Colonel Lageman, was also named for arrest. Despite the barrage of vicious propaganda that has been heaped on us subsequently, no decision was made in the 1962 meeting to pick out any ethnic group for elimination or destruction. Their goals were lofty and their intent were honorable. There was a national outlook to the coup. The young officers wanted for the coup to be carried out on a broad scale so that it would be greeted with national acclaim. They had planned to employ the least amount of force possible so that their approach would be immediately regarded as better than those of politicians who simply continue to murder the same people they were supposed to govern. The necessity for more middle-level officers to be brought in was discussed. However, the few names that could be mentioned had to be eliminated due to interpersonal relationships that would jeopardize the security of the planning process. It is safe to assume that the failure of the coup in Lagos influenced the destiny of the troops and politicians imprisoned there. The Bosch revolution put the young majors in the dilemma, and in the subsequent turmoil and anxiety, the captured politicians and soldiers became a heavy load and were murdered. Regardless of what many believe were the intentions of the five majors who plotted and executed the January revolution, it is still referred to be an Igbo coup. 
How easy, for instance, would it have been to stamp the January 1966 coup as being merely an Igbo coup if it was known that the original five majors who planned and executed it were minded to release Awolowo from Calabar prison and to make him their leader? How could the January coup still be seen as an Igbo ambition to dominate if the leaders intended to release Awolowo from prison and hand over federal government to him from the outset? Or was it possible that Gowon took a hint from the young major's primary aims and quickly released Awolowo after assuming power in order to secure the support and unity of the Yorubas, effectively rendering the Igbo a pariah? But whatever was the intention of the Gowon-led government, his actions triggered an attack that led to the massacre of thousands of Igbos. Interestingly though, this was not considered murder or genocide by the Gowan-led administration. The war against the Igbo began to smolder just before May 1966 when House of Fulani hegemonic jihadists who had been destabilized by the glorious January Revolution launched a campaign of pogrom and genocide against Easterners in general and Igbos in particular. And when Gowan declared that there was no basis for unity, it prompted widespread ethnic cleansing. It was however observed that the personal ambition of the executors in the South mixed with vendetta marred the patriotic rhetoric. Nevertheless, there were genuine men among the conspirators whose patriotism cannot be faulted. Majors Nziogu and Ademoyega felt that Nigeria needed an urgent rescue operation before the political class destroyed it. But the mundane and ethnic consideration of their co-conspirators marred the sources of the venture. Major Kaduna Nziogu was a destabilized Nigerian, as seen by the admiration that has continued to flood in following his death. In one of his last interviews in May 1967, Nziogu denounced the East call for secession. The January 15, 1966 coup was a failed rescue effort that resulted in incalculable consequences for everyone. The political unrest in the country, which the young generals believed could be settled forcefully, had a scope that their unlimited expertise could not have addressed. Nigeria, a newly independent country at the time, was confronted with the hydra-headed dilemma of nation-building in a multi-ethnic society. Even after more than 60 years of independence, the country is still dealing with these issues. Do you believe the January 15, 1966 coup was a patriotic endeavor that went wrong, probably due to personal interest of some of the executors in the South? Let me know your thoughts in comment section. Click the video on your screen right now for interesting historical facts about Nigeria from the colonial rule through independence agitation to the Biafra War. If you receive any value from this video, please smash the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.